Welcome back students. So, we were covering our inorganic chemical industries, uh, this part 1 and in that we were covering the ammonia synthesis. The ammonia synthesis we saw the reactors specific configuration and also saw the reactive I mean the reactions and the thermodynamics involved for ammonia synthesis. So, now we move ahead and see what is the process configuration. So, in this particular uh, lecture we will see an integrated ammonia plant and also how its hydrogen is recovered because nowadays hydrogen is very precious gas so it has to be recovered it cannot be thrown away. So, be, due to this we see several schemes uh, we will talk about later in the lecture. So, what we will cover in this is the ammonia synthesis loops which are available, then the integrated ammonia plant we will see the several processes that is the primary reforming and sulphur removal, secondary reforming and carbon dioxide removal, then we will see the final ammonia synthesis. So, any plant will have these different setups the primary reforming sulphur removal, secondary reforming and ammonia synthesis. So, we will see how the streams are connected or they are integrated within each other. The hydrogen recovery will come at the last because uh, you know in this ammonia plant lot of hydrogen is generated because most of the ammonia is generated from the natural gas. So, natural gas has more amount of hydrogen. So, this hydrogen it needs to be recirculated and before it is recirculated it needs to be adsorbed. So, that is adsorbed how we do it we will see two processes the pressure swing adsorption and the membrane separation. So, in the first what happens if you just simply go through a single step process it is a batch process only 20 to 30 percent conversion is possible. If you keep the temperature and pressure which you saw that pressure temperature has to be low pressure has to be high. So, problem is this unconverted syngas leaves the reactor together with ammonia. So, if you are if you are having a syngas and uh, you have separated the hydrogen and nitrogen in a single pass only 30 percent is getting converted. So, it means there is a need for recycling. So, the there is four cases. So, if you have I would say it is overall two cases. The first case is when you have pure gas, when there is no other impurity in the syngas. This is very important because if there is any impurity in the syngas it will corrode the catalyst or it will deactivate the catalyst. So, the first step if you have pure syngas that is the best configuration is possible. So, if it is free of catalyst poison such as what are the catalyst poisons I should tell you this is water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulphide. So, it can if it flows directly to the reactor you cannot use this particular configuration which I will just now discuss. So, this will result when you do not have any impurity in the feed it will result in the lowest ammonia content at the entrance of the reactor and the highest ammonia concentration for condensation. So, it is the most favorable arrangement from a kinetic and an energy point of view. So, what is that arrangement? So, you have basically two things one is a reactor and a condenser. So, I will write here first I will draw here reactor. So, this is your reactor. So, you have the catalyst present here catalyst section ok. So, now your feed gas is coming here. So, what you do is you compress the feed gas ok. So, while you do the compression I am putting the sign of the pump like this then what happens is there is a recycle gas which is coming from the condenser that is also getting added here. So, again you compress it, so you again compress this gas and then send it to the reactor ok. So, it means once the conversion goes here the effluents come out the ammonia is formed along with unconverted nitrogen and hydrogen. So, you put it inside this condenser. So, the part of this will condense and into ammonia pure ammonia NH3 and the remaining gases you send it to a recycle like it is sent here. So, you purge some amount of gas outside so as to avoid the build up of any inert or any nitrogen gas inside. So, if you see this configuration carefully this is the most favorable arrangement because the pressure you are using to compress feed gas and 
only unconverted gas. There, so, there is no ammonia in the condenser that is the separator. So, if I want to write these units, these are the reactor and this is the separator. Okay. So, you have the lowest ammonia getting recycled, lowest ammonia concentration getting recycled, it is primarily N2 and H2 getting recycled, N2 or H2 is getting recycled. So, it gets pressurized, the feed gas initially gets pressurized once and then once this gas enters, it is again repressurized, so then it enters the reactor and then after that there is no compression. So, low compression cost is the least. So, you have to only compress the feed gas, there is no other recycled gas which has the product in it. So, the recycled gas does not contain any product. So, this is the most favorable from the energy point of view, less amount of energy. But this is usually not possible because most of the gases if will have this compounds carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulphide. So, it means you need to condense these gases out first. Okay, along with ammonia, you need to condense these gases out. Then you can send the recycle feed. But the problem is when you send the recycle feed back to the reactor, then you are also sending a part of product. So, it means you are uh, compressing both product as well as reactor. So, your compression cost increases. But we cannot help because this is a trade off because if you do not remove these impurities, you will be having problem in your catalyst and your catalyst may be deactivated. So, let us see the second step configuration. In a second configuration, the ammonia recovery is provided. So, ammonia recovery is uh, done, but then recycle compression has ammonia gas in it. So, if the ga feed gas is not sufficiently poor, the condensation stage is partly or entirely located between the, you should note this point, between the feed gas supply and the reactor in order to remove the impurities. Earlier your condenser was after the reactor. Now it says it should be placed in between the input gas and the reactor. So, this is a difference. So, why to do that? So, as to remove the impurities before the gas enters the reactors. But then disadvantage as I have just now told, the disadvantage is that the ammonia produced in the reactor has to be compressed along with the recycled gas. So, you are compressing both the products and reactants. So, let us see the configuration for the entire loop when we have some feed gas on the reactor. In initial case, we drew the reactor first and the condenser. Now, we will drew the condenser first. So, first you will have the condenser here, then the reactor. Okay. So, reactor will be as usual, it will have the catalyst in it. Okay. So, now what happens? As usual, initially your feed gas is entering. When the feed gas enters, what you do? You compress it like before, you compress this. Now, whatever recycled gas is coming, you have to compress again. So, you have to put another compressor here, then send this to the condenser. So, it means the recycled gas has the product as well as the reactant in it and this feed gas will have the impurities in it because this is configuration only works when there is impurities in the feed gas. So, now what you do is you will now remove this in the condenser. So, what you have is So, you take out the ammonia, liquid ammonia plus any impurities out here. Okay. So, it means that the liquid phase is taken care of. Now, what happens to the gas phase? The gas phase is the one which then goes inside the reactor. The gas phase goes inside the reactor. So, then there is again a conversion and the reactant effluent then goes up and actually it meets with this. recycle stream. So, some amount is purged, this is purged so as to avoid the build up of the raw material. So, now you see if I want to draw here, this is compressor 1, this is compressor 2 and this is your recycle gas.
okay so this is your recycled gas fine so if you see that uh, issue here is this is the separator and this is the reactor now you see the recycled gas if it comes out from the reactor it enters along with the feed gas so now you are compressing the impurities along with the feed gas and the product also so your compression cost is more so now can we just in order to make it more uh, lower the compression cast is there any other favorable arrangement yes there are there are some other favorable arrangement also let us see what is that so now we recover the ammonia before the recycle completion so it is similar to the previous arrangement but differ in the compressor arrangements the principle here is where you want to keep the compressor okay which part so to avoid the compression of ammonia produced from the reactor rather it mixes with the compressed feed gas before entering the condenser later only gas stream is compressed which contains feed gas and the recycled unconverted gas however ammonia is condensed at a lower pressure resulting in a higher ammonia concentration in the gas stream at the reactor inlet so this compression is very favorable but the only issue is the product separation is less okay the product separation will be pure but it will be less as compared to the previous one but at the same time your compression cost is decreasing so let us see what is that particular so as before you have the feed gas here coming in so once the feed gas comes here it is then again compressed it is compressed and then uh, it is straight away taken to the condenser okay it straight away takes into the condenser this is the condenser then what happens is that you separate out the ammonia separate out the ammonia along with the impurities ammonia plus i irates is impurities impurities and then take out the gas which is coming out then compress that gas okay so whatever gas you separated you compress that and then you put that into the inlet of the reactor okay then so what happens is again as before you send the recycle stream here so this is the recycle stream so now you see if again i draw these two compressor as c1 and c2 okay now here there was when it is entered this condenser so this is your condenser this is again this is a reactor when it enters the condenser the pressure which is to which it is compressed is low so it means the recovery of ammonia will also be low but on the other hand the gases which are taken out from the top they are again compressed and sent to the reactor the conversion is in high but the recovery is less so this is in a way you are reducing compression cost but because in this compression c2 you are only compressing your reactants not products in the earlier case it was reactants and products but in this case you have lesser amount of the desired product withdrawn because of the lower pressure compression so these are the things you should understand so that's why i have written ammonia is condensed at lower pressure so when it is condensed at lower pressure it has a higher ammonia concentration in the gas stream so here you have the amount of ammonia which is there in the gas stream will be higher in the recycle stream so that is another another configuration is there which is you use another extra condenser so what is that tell you so two stages of product to avoid the compression of liquid ammonia the ammonia produced from the reactor will pass through the additional condenser to avoid compression of liquid ammonia further unconverted gas can be recycled for compression coming out from condenser however splitting of this ammonia condensation is not economically feasible 
because it requires an additional condenser. So, your capital cost here increases. Although this is the best, recurring cost will be less, but the capital cost increases because you need another condenser. So, let us see that also. So, again you have the condenser, now you will have two condensers instead of one. So, this is the one condenser, you have another condenser, we put it after the ammonia is produced. So, you have the reactor here, it's catalyst bed here. Now, what happens is like before your feed gas is entering here, feed gas enters here, okay. it gets compressed. So, it means whenever I draw to the arrow this side, it means it is compression. If it is the opposite, it is depressurization okay, or expansion. So, then it, it enters the first condenser. Okay. Then what you have is your this condenser, the liquid ammonia is taken out here. So, you do not need to compress liquid part of the ammonia and the reactor effluent. So, once the, so obviously, the gases which are coming out, they are again sent to the reactor and the reactor effluent is then what they do, they will then send it to the second condenser. Okay. They will send it to the second condenser. So, here also you recover the ammonia. Okay. So, recover most of the ammonia, one from this condenser. So, I write here CO1, condenser 1, and CO2, condenser 2. So, condenser 1 and condenser 2 therefore, recovers the entire liquid ammonia. So, whatever remains is then actually sent as a recycled gas stream. So, it is sent back, some amount is purged. So, the recycled gas will have only this reactants. So, this is the recycled gas and this is your purge. So, now you see this condenser 1 and condenser 2 is able to recover both the liquid ammonia. So, you avoid the compression of ammonia in either of the compressor. So, there is another compressor, sorry I did not draw here, there will be another compressor at the start of this. So, you have another condenser because you need to compress it to that earlier level. You have another compressor before you send it here. Okay. So, the compression requires same, but you are only compressing, only compressing the reactants, the nitrogen and hydrogen. Most of the liquid ammonia is taken away from the two condensers. This is another one, but only issue is it requires an additional condenser. This is the four different loops for ammonia synthesis. So, you should pay attention to the way how the liquid is removed because all the gases they will be differing in their boiling points. So, if you put it in a condenser, so basically nothing but it is a flash unit. So, you separate out the gases and the liquid components. Okay, That is what you do in a condenser. So, let us move ahead. We have seen the ammonia synthesis loop. Now, let us discuss about the integrated ammonia plant. So, this is a part of the loop. Now, is that so easy? because ultimately you do not have, you need to do several steps because you will be having natural gas as the fuel. From natural gas, you have to separate out, convert it and then again reduce it and then send it to ammonia synthesis. So, natural gas, why we are choosing? Because it has more amount of hydrogen, it is methane. So, this methane needs to be steam reformed. So, there are two sets of steam reforming, the primary reforming and the secondary reforming. So, what happens is that you steam that is the methane when reacts with steam, they gets converted to carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Okay. So, then what you do in the next step, so we will see that here. So, the disadvantage of such a entire system or series of steps is failure of a single unit will lead to the plant shutdown. But the advantage is such arrangements are easy to install with lower investment cost. So, these are the reference steps. You have, suppose you have the natural gas coming inside. Okay. So, natural gas, natural gas is NG. Natural gas, you should remove all sulfur component. You remove them, you do a process called desulfurization. 
then you send it to a primary reformer. So primary reformer means uh, uh, what you do is primary and secondary reformer. If I tell it, you can say it is uh, you know, partial or uh, complete oxidation. So here you have partial conversion of the methane to carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and then air, in the secondary reformer you take, you take in air, this air becomes the source of nitrogen, the secondary reformer the oxygen and nitrogen, so oxygen will react with the methane, remaining methane. What you have you form more of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So if you have carbon dioxide, so you need to do a shift, so water gas shift reaction. So it means you convert CO2 to CO and H2, okay. So whatever you do, you have producing CO and CO2 and H2, H2 we will be requiring from the reforming, but CO and CO2 we do not require in the final ammonia synthesis because as I told you these carbon oxides are detrimental to the reactor, so they will poison the reactor. So you need to totally eliminate this carbon oxide. The process of elimination of carbon oxides is methanation. So what you do, you convert this carbon oxides, so you convert it to methane, whatever left carbon monoxide to methane and water then it is fine because methane if it enters is not a problem, it, it is basically an inert in this case for the ammonia synthesis reactor. So then what you do, whatever remaining gases they should be still be doubly sheared, you remove all the carbon dioxide through the scrubbing and then you send it to condenser, you remove the remaining impurities or the gases and send only nitrogen and hydrogen to the liquid ammonia synthesis loop and the way we discuss the configuration, pick one of those loops and obtain liquid ammonia. So carbon oxides are highly poisonous to the iron based ammonia synthesis catalyst and the catalyst in the secondary reformer is similar in the primary reformer. So I will tell you what is this primary reforming and secondary reforming. Primary reforming, secondary reforming are it is nothing but you converting the methane to carbon monoxides or carbon oxides and hydrogen. So let us see a basic flow diagram how this occurs. So if you see the overall process, there will be several steps obviously, you have the desulphurization, so desulphurization is the most important step, you have natural gas coming in, desulphurization, you take away sulphur, then what you do is you do, so if I want, reforming. Now whether it is primary or secondary reforming, ultimately the process of reforming means you make it react with steam or oxygen, okay. Either you steam or it is oxygen and convert to its and convert methane to syngas. If you produce syngas, you will have hydrogen which is one of the raw material. Now the issue is why we are not using biomass or coal, because in biomass and coal hydrogen concentration is less. But in ammonia, the Haber's process, you need uh, 3 moles of hydrogen for 1 mole of nitrogen. So you need more and more of hydrogen. So the carbon oxides, if they are formed, they are to be removed, there are two purposes. One is you remove them, otherwise they become poison to the ammonia synthesis reaction. And second is, if you recover more and more of carbon monoxide, you have more and more hydrogen, which is the drop material. So that is what it, they do actually, after reforming, they do the So water gas shift reaction, so water gas shift reaction means you are converting the all the carbon dioxide, most of the carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide, okay, you are converting carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. So this, we will see this water gas shift reaction later. So once it is formed, if there is any carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, it is formed it is then send, if there is any CO2, so what you do, you go a CO2 removal. CO2 removal. So in the CO2 removal, you remove the CO2 from the gases so that you, whatever you send to the ammonia synthesis loop, it is free of any carbon oxides. So after CO2 removal, you you do a condensation, so 
So you separate out the impurities and so that you only have nitrogen and hydrogen entering the ammonia synthesis reactor, ammonia synthesis loop or reactor. ammonia synthesis and then finally ammonia recovery NH3 recovery. Now uh, just another step which I missed here is, is carbon dioxide we are saying it is to be removed but sometimes what happens not all is removed even there is trace amount that is very uh, detrimental to the ammonia synthesis reactor. So what they do they do a process called as methanation here methanation. So, they convert all carbon dioxide to methane that is called methanation. So, I would write here another step which is methanation. Okay. So, this is the entire integrated ammonia plant loop. Okay. So, finally you get the ammonia recovery. So, condensation here means you remove the you, you are doing the purging of other gases. So, this is called purging, so you remove the other gases and finally you get pure ammonia. So this is the way an integrated ammonia plant works. Okay. So the first step here is the primary reforming and sulphur removal. So what we do is in the first step if we send dry gas at high pressure and at normal temperature it will enter the primary reformer, dry gas will be mostly methane, catalyst required in the primary reformer is the minimum. So, in the primary reformer it is requires the least amount of catalyst among all the units. So, partially converted feed gas enters the furnace for combustion. The furnace allows combustion of natural gas in the presence of fuel and air. So, let us see what is the primary reformer here happening. So, essentially what you do is in the primary reformer you have the uh, let us say your natural gas is coming here. So, we will go step by step. Now, we have discussed the entire process. Now the first process which is natural gas this enters the unit where the entire sulphur is removed. So there is some hydroprocessing reaction so entire sulphur is removed this is sent to a furnace. So in the furnace what you have is uh, you have a central part. A reformer. So, you send a steam here, process steams to be sent here. Now, when you send the process steam, so it gets heated up and then it enters the reformer like this. And the reformer, what you do, you can you also add here fuel and like I have written here, it is you add the dry air. Okay. You dry air, dry gas and air is also the furnace allows combustion of natural gas in the presence of fuel and air. So here you are adding fuel plus air, you add fuel and air here. So what you do is this is actually kept in an enclosure, okay. this entire enclosure is within this. So this enclosure what happens is there are two types of reaction happening in the furnace. So this is your furnace. So two sort of reactions happening. So it is an autothermal reaction. So you have combustion and some combustion reaction is occurring and then your reforming reaction. So combustion reforming, combustion is exothermic, reforming is endothermic. So whatever heat is generated from combustion is taken up by the reforming reaction. Okay. So this is uh, some, these are the burners. So you have these burners here which actually ignite this furnace. So while it enters it takes up some heat and then enters the uh, this uh, reformer. So the products of the secondary reforming is here. So now what are the reactions occurring? So natural gas is stripped of sulphur and then it enters the furnace where fuel and air is inserted in the furnace and ignited with this burner. So these are the burners, these are the burners. So stream 1, if I talk about stream 1, so these are the two streams, stream 1 if I want to enter and you have stream 
one which is coming out this is stream stream 2 which is entering one of them is entering. So, what you have is in the secondary reforming you will have the compounds such as methane as a product then you have carbon dioxide then you have carbon monoxide and then you have hydrogen. So, this hydrogen concentration will be pretty much high as compared to the other three and in this case you are adding fuel and air it means we are adding CH4 the methane is added also here. So, this concentration is very high. So, dry gas uh, fuel plus air. So, you have CO2 also and some amount of hydrogen also which is called fuel and air is added. So, these are the things you are adding and the feed if I want to write it down you have this primarily methane. Primarily methane I will not write the other components. So, I put here it is primarily methane. Okay. So, in this sulfur is removed. So, what are the reaction happening in this combustion chamber? So, you have a combustion chamber followed by a reforming section. So, in the reforming in the combustion chamber these are the reactions which are occurring. The exothermic reaction takes place first. Combustion chamber at the upper part of the chamber these are the reactions occurring. So, methane will react with half of O2 to form carbon monoxide and hydrogen and then methane can also react fully with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So, now water formation is taking place. So, these are exothermic reaction, these are exothermic in nature. Now, this exothermic reactions is used for the reforming reaction. Now, what are the reforming reactions which are carried out in the lower part of the furnace? reforming the reforming are endothermic. So, methane will react with the steam the process steam is sent here it will react with the steam. So, this will be reversible because this is not combustible this is reversible in nature it will form more of carbon monoxide 3 times hydrogen and or you can also get methane may also react with carbon dioxide which is formed earlier. Okay to form more of. So, these are endothermic reaction. So, this is the first two steps. So, in this so the products the effluents coming out from the furnace is then sent to the secondary reforming. Okay. So, there are two sets of reaction happening in the combustion chamber and in the reforming chamber. So, yeah, now you can see more amount of hydrogen is formed because the moles of hydrogen formed is higher as compared to carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. This is the first part. Now, we move ahead then look up the secondary reforming what happens in the secondary reforming. So, if I want to draw the secondary reforming so, just want to get hold of this entire equation or the equi process till now what we have did. So, we did this. So, this was just now I discussed this entire this is the reforming reaction here I discussed just now. Okay. Now, when this reforming re expression is complete you send it to this what you call as carbon monoxide shift reaction. Okay. So, there are two types of carbon monoxide. So, carbon monoxide is shifted to carbon dioxide the so, water gas shift reaction. So, this I will discuss now primarily. So, the dotted part this is the main. So, this is the high temperature as well as low temperature carbon monoxide shift reaction. Then you do a methanation. So, whatever carbon dioxide is there you convert to methane this is another part methane. Methanation reaction and then you separate whatever the if there is any carbon dioxide remaining after methanation you separate it out in this scrubber. So, whatever you left is uh, you send it to the reactor the ammonia reactor you send it for the ammonia recovery section. Okay. So, this whatever gases coming out you send it to the ammonia recovery section because the gases unconverted gases from the ammonia will also be sent there. So, along with this you also send the gases which are converted 
in the methanation and carbon monoxide shift reaction to the ammonia recovery section. Now let us see in detail this, uh, this carbon monoxide. So what it is? So the secondary forming and carbon dioxide removal, the process air containing required amount of nitrogen and hydrogen is now sent to the ammonia synthesis loop and it is mixed with the superheated feed in the secondary reformer. Combustion of feed gas increases the concentration of CO in the reactor, so there is a chances of catalyst poisoning. So due to this, this CO and or CO2 needs to be, CO needs to be converted to CO2 and then CO2 needs to be methanated, it needs to do a methanation reaction. So these are very important. How this methanation reaction takes place? So see, this is the basic reaction which is occurring. To remove carbon monoxide, it is converted to carbon dioxide. This is called the water gas shift reaction. Now this water gas shift reaction is very interesting. So this water gas shift reaction, the expression is something like this, the rate constant. Okay. Uh, if I want to plot the temperature in Kelvin versus the rate constant, of this particular reaction, lower temperature is usually preferable. So the rate constants actually increases with lower temperature. So if this is 400 Kelvin, this is 800 Kelvin, so you can see and the rates are increasing. So if this is 100, if this is 100, this is 200, so this goes on to almost close to let us say around 400 if I want to draw it correctly, 400. So it means this water gas shift reaction needs to be carried at a lower temperature. So lower the temperature, higher is the rate constant. So what they do is, so it means what they do in the this type of reaction is they use two of the setups. One is the low temperature shift reactor followed by a high temperature shift reactor. The low temperature shift reactor operates at about 500 Kelvin and uses a copper based catalyst while a high temperature shift reactor operates at high temperature containing iron oxide based catalyst. So the reaction occurring is this water gas shift reaction. After that most of the CO2, it, we have CO2 from this high temp water gas shift reaction. So this CO2 is also removed by methanation process. What in the methanation process what happens is you uh, react the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide with hydrogen and form methane and water. Okay. So this is the way you remove all the carbon monoxide. So let us see how does this uh, low temperature and high temperature shift reaction works. So till now, so what we have seen from the secondary reforming, what you have is uh, you have this uh, boiler feed water getting heated up from the effluents of secondary reforming. It is then separating out all the liquids are getting separated up. This is cold water coming inside before it is cooled and then it is compressed and uh, it is sent to the ammonia synthesis loop. So in the ammonia synthesis loop, you have now please recollect what we studied. So what we studied was that we saw that uh, where you need to put the condenser. In this case, you have the condenser followed by reactor. So it means you are compressing here as well as here. So both the places you are compressing and then you are sending it to the reactor. So here is the ammonia synthesis reactor. So once you send it to the ammonia synthesis reactor, you are getting the fluents coming down from the bottom. So I discussed in the previous lecture, so you can use this type of reactor module where you have a catalyst bed and a heat exchanger, catalyst bed followed by a heat exchanger. A similar vertical type of reactor is used. So you are sending the cold feed inside and trying to cool it down. So this way what you do is you separate out all the liquid ammonia from there and from here. So whatever liquid ammonia is coming out from here, from this part and then from this part. So these liquid ammonia are entering into two different condensers. So they are separated out and you get pure 99.1% ammonia NH3 coming out and the remaining gases are all purged. So this is the purged gases. So whatever remaining gases which are coming out from this condenser are separated, they are condensed and then they are purged. So this is way how it is done. So when I talk of secondary reforming, I am talking about secondary reforming followed by methanation and uh, methanation followed by CO2 scrubbing, both. 
So it is something like this. So you have secondary reforming, then the carbon monoxide high temperature shift, carbon monoxide low temperature shift, then the methanation, then ammonia synthesis. Now see the reaction temperature. So from 1200 it goes to 700 Kelvin, 500 Kelvin, 320 Kelvin and 293 Kelvin. These two I have not discussed this carbon monoxide, why they are at different temperatures. So what happens something like that, so if you have this, if I want to discuss this carbon monoxide high temperature and low temperature, how they are done is you have this syn gas coming out here, it is entering the first your high temperature. So the temperatures here at around 640 and 710 Kelvin, okay. So there is a conversion, you cool it down and again send it to the low temperature reactor. So when you cool and send it to the, so you are cooling it down here to uh, some, send it to the low temperature reactor. In the low temperature reactor, the temperatures are around uh, not much, 490, 510 Kelvin, okay. And then finally, you have the shifted gas. So when I ask, tell it is a shifted gas, it means all has been converted to carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide has converted to carbon dioxide. So now if you see this uh, catalyst as I told you in the initial part you have uh, the high temperature has the iron based catalyst, Fe based catalyst and this will have the copper based catalyst. Now in this region if I want to draw out this region uh, part A here, so it will have three regions actually, you have the deactivated deactivated catalyst zone, then you have the active catalyst zone and then you will have the unused catalyst zone. So it means this entire region is distributed in this order deactivated, active and unused because the most of the reactions occur in the upper part, so it is deactivated. So the temperature is increased in the upper part, not much temperature increased, the active catalyst zone is in the middle part where the reaction, the water gas shift reaction occurs and finally you have the unused catalyst zone because you need to get the complete conversion. So that is why they use these three layers of catalyst zone, okay. So this is the entire integrated ammonia synthesis loop. So what are the things we have learnt here? A regular temperature drop, so we have seen a regular temperature drop indicates the exothermic behaviour of the system. Pure feed gas containing hydrogen nitrogen of 3 is to 1 ratio is finally used for the ammonia synthesis. Other gases such as methane or inert gas is removed from the purge before final condensation of ammonia. Because you produce more and more of methane in the methanation step, so when you are producing more and more of methane in the methanation step, you need to uh, remove them because they cannot go inside the reactor, so you condense it. So if you see here, I have shown, see this particular, you are compressing the gases which are coming from the secondary forming which is after methanation, so you are removing here, so these are the two condensers where you are removing all the gases. So all the gases where the CH4 and the inert gases are all coming out and doing as the purge, so in the purge you are removing most of the gases. So this is very important. So now uh, if you see what are the catalyst volumes you require for a 1500 ton day. Now the amount of catalyst is very important because you require catalyst in several sections. So you have the desulphurization section, you have the primary reforming section, secondary reforming, high temperature shift which is the iron based catalyst low temperature shift, this copper based catalysis, then methanation and ammonia synthesis. So now the see the catalyst volumes, the amount of volume you require for a 1500 ton per day ammonia plant is close to 76 with respect to the desulphurization, then 24 for primary reforming, then for secondary reforming you have 50, for high temperature shift close to 86 meter cube, then low temperature shift to 92, then methanation 38 
and ammonia synthesis is 92. So you see the amounts you can easily see where you need the catalyst more. Uh, the amount of catalyst for the converting the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide is the most because 86 plus 92 if you add them up it is more than any other step. So you require lot of catalyst to make sure that the gas which is entering the ammonia synthesis reactor is free of any carbon dioxide. So now if you see in the specific energy requirements, if I want to compare with several requirements or processes, so you can uh, compare some of the process called the classical Haber-Bosch process which requires the energy of around 80 to 90 gigajoule, then the reformer pressure method and the for 5 to 10 bar, the reformer pressure method out of these are the years where, we, where they were used, low energy concepts they were also applied. So if you see the state of the art nowadays what has been used just now I discussed the integrated ammonia, the amount of energy consumption has decreased as the with decades. So it has coming down and down and down. So it is close to the theoretical minimum value. Okay. So uh, we will see that this process so needs lot of intervention. You need a lot of knowledge of chemical engineering fundamentals. So where I should put the condenser? If I put the condenser, whether my compression cost is increasing or decreasing, and uh, whether we require any other gases to be removed prior to the reactor, all these are very useful. So things to be kept to the mind is you should the entire gas should be free from any catalyst poison. Uh, that is also important. So what this we next we will move on to the to the hydrogen recovery because in all these processes if you see in the previous slide also a lot of hydrogen is generated. So this hydrogen needs to be removed. So this removal actually takes place in various methods which I will discuss that is the cryogenic method you can use distillation or you can use adsorption, you can use absorption or you can use membrane. So we will take this up now. Mm -hmm.